is a video about using LaTeX in the development's life cycle. The focus of today's video is project update, which is pretty central to uh, the development life cycle. So what we have here is a LaTeX project that I have created, uh, and I've called this the Ant project. Um, and this has been created using Ant version 1.4.1. And I've created a number of rules associated with it. I've made rules about the third-party libraries that this package uses. And I've also created certain rules to reflect the layering uh, that's inherent in this project. So that it's been split up into three layers, the task layer, the framework layer, and the utilities layer. And I've made rules uh, to indicate the dependencies that aren't allowed and the dependencies that are allowed for those set of layers. So now what I'm going to do is to update this project. And what project update does is to take the current set of input and read it again and apply the project, uh, the project as we have defined. And so if the input has changed, uh, then you get, then the project is updated for you. Instead, what I will do is I'll mimic that change and I'm going to go to project properties and I'll apply a different input to it. So instead of 1.4.1, we'll use ant161, and then we'll update the input. And when we do that, then we get the project update dialog. And it has a number of options on it, and let's look at some of these options. So there is an option which says create tags for new and changed elements. So this, uh, what this does is in the resulting project that we get, the new and, uh, and the change elements are tagged so that you can now operate on those or you can do an impact report on those tagged elements. You can produce a display report and in fact, let's select the produce detailed report, uh, which will produce, as you will see, a fairly detailed report about everything that's new and changed and missing and so on. And those are the different sections of these reports, and we'll take a look at those reports once we do an update. So now I'm updating the project, which again means that I'm taking my existing project and applying a, a fresh input to it while preserving the current structure as well as the rules that I had in the project. So as you can see, the project has become larger. Um, the first thing that I can see here is that a new package has shown up called bzip2 at, at the top level, uh, and this package did not exist before. So we used to have this three-layered structure, but we can see that there's a new package that has shown up. Notice also that inside each of these uh, packages or layers, the, the task layer, the framework, and the utilities, uh, you can see that a number of different packages have shown up. And indeed, inside these packages, a number of different classes have shown up as well. And so project update is smart about putting the classes and the packages that are found in the right places. And if it doesn't know where to put them, uh, it'll put them at the top level. Now let's take a look at the report that, uh, that, that it has produced. And this report has five different sections. And so well, let's look at the first, first section. And this says missing atoms. And what atoms is LaTeX terminology for the domain elements. For Java, the domain elements are classes, interfaces, fields, methods, and so on. And this report tells me that there is a new interface that has come in called constants, a new meth class that has come in called desire, uh, I'm sorry, a new class that no longer exists called desirable filters because we are looking at missing atoms. And in fact, we can see there is a class called ant class loader, which has certain number of elements that are missing. So that class continues to exist, but no longer has these fields uh, and a method which is, no, which is no longer there. If we go to new atoms, uh, again, we'll see, uh, and we can see that all the different classes um, and fields and methods that are that have now come in. So uh, since ant type definitions expanded, it shows me all the different fields and methods uh, that didn't exist before but have now been added to that class. And we can then go to the change atoms for Java. And in this particular case, the changed atoms 
are again we see the the the, the elements and why and how they have changed so for instance there are these constructors for end class loader and they have different set of dependencies and in fact here is a method called cleanup and its property is changed as well along with its dependencies and when I click on the property it tells me that this method has now been turned into a synchronized method and and then let's look at perhaps the most important part of this report uh, which is the the new violations uh, which which are all the dependencies which violate the rules that we created and and as you can as as you can see most of these are the layer violations that have come in where the framework has dependency on the uh, on the tasks and finally there is also a, a, a section which says the rule violations that have been fixed and so if you are improving your architecture and you made a set of rules and when you do it and you have fixed some of those dependencies which which weren't allowed uh, then those will be identified for you as well so project update is really a central part of uh, of using latex in the development life cycle uh, as well as you would integrate that into your continuous integration environment and then you you would then publish these reports and the new updated project to the repository where right from your browser itself you could see how it has how your project has changed from one build to another and whether you have introduced any architectural violation in the latest build 